live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Good morning, welcome to theCUBE. We are on day two of our coverage of our event, Big Data SV. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're down the street from the Strata Data Conference. This is theCUBE's 10th Big Data event, and we had a great day yesterday learning a lot from myriad guests on very different nuances of big data journey where things are going. We're excited to welcome back to theCUBE an alumni, Octavian Tanase, the Senior Vice President of Data on Tap from NetApp. Octavian, welcome back to theCUBE. Glad to be here. So you've been at the Strata Data Conference for the last couple of days. From a dig, big data perspective, what are some of the things that you're hearing in terms of, from a customer's perspective on what's working, what challenges, opportunities? So I'm very excited to be here and um, learn about the innovation of our you know, partners in the industry and, and share with our partners and our customers what we're doing to enable them uh, to derive more value out of the data. Um, the reality is that data has become the 21st century you know, gold or oil that powers uh, the, the business, and everybody's looking to apply new techniques, a lot of times uh, machine learning, deep learning, to draw more, um, you know, more value out of the data, make decisions, better decisions, and, and compete in the marketplace. Octavian, you, Octavian, you've been at uh, NetApp now eight years, yep. and I've been watching NetApp as we were talking about offline for decades, and I've seen the ebb and flow, and this company has transformed many, many times. The latest, you were go, you, obviously you know, cloud came in, flash came, came into play, and then you were also going through a major transition in the customer base to, to clustered on tap, and you've seemed to negotiate that. NetApp is really back, thriving, stocks up. What's happening at, at NetApp? What's the culture like these days? Give us the update. Well, I, I think we've been uh, you know, very fortunate uh, to, to have a CEO like George Korean who has been really focused on, um, on helping us do basically fewer things better. Um, really focus on our core business, um, simplify our operations, and, and continue to, to innovate. And this is probably the area that I'm most excited about, right? Um, it's always good to, to make sure that you accelerate the business, make it simpler for your customers and your partners to, bid, um, to do business with you, but you, what you have to do is innovate. We are a product company, we are passionate about innovation, I, I believe that we are innovating with more pace than many of the startups in, in the space, so mm. that's probably the most exciting thing that has been part of our transformation. So let's talk about sort of big data. So, so back in the day, right, if you had a big data problem, you would buy a big you know, Unix box maybe buy some Oracle licenses and you try to put all your data into that box and that became your data warehouse. The brilliance of Hadoop was, hey, we can leave the data where it is, there's too much data to put into the box, and we're going to bring five megabytes to code or to a petabyte of data. And the other piece of it is CFOs loved it because we're going to reduce the cost of our expensive data warehouse and we're going to buy off-the-shelf components, white box uh, servers and off-the-shelf disk drives, we're going to put that together and life will be good. Well, as things matured, you know, like the old client server days, it got very expensive, you needed enterprise grade. So where does NetApp fit into that equation? Because originally, big storage companies like NetApp, they weren't part of the equation. Has that changed? Absolutely, um, and one of the things that has enabled that transformation, that, that change, is we made a deliberate decision to focus on software defined and making sure that the, the ONTAP operating system is available wherever data is being created at the edge on an IOT device in the traditional data center or in the cloud. So we are in a unique position to enable you know, analytics, big data, whatever that data, or whatever those applications you know, reside. Now one of the things that we've recently done is we partnered with IDC and um, what the, the study, the, what the analysis has shown is that deploying um, an analytics, a Hadoop or NoSQL type of solution on top of NetApp it's half the cost of DAS. So if you, when you consider the cost of the servers, the licenses that you're going to have to, to pay for these uh, implementations, commercial implementations of Hadoop, as well as the storage and the data infrastructure, you are much better off you know, choosing NetApp than a, you know, a white box type of solution. Let's unpack that a little bit, because if, if, if I infer correctly from what you said, 
So normally you would say, okay, the operational costs are going to be dramatically lower. It's easier to manage a you know, professional system like a NetApp ONTEP that's integrated, great software. But if, am I hearing you correctly? You're saying that the acquisition costs are actually uh, less than if I'm buying white costs. So a lot of people are going to be skeptical about that, say, Octavia, no, no way. It's cheaper to buy you know, white box stuff. Well, defend that statement. Well, absolutely. Um, if you're looking at the whole solution that includes the server and, and, and the storage, what NetApp enables to do, you to do, if you're running the solution on top of ONTAP, you reduce the need for so many servers. If you reduce that number, you also reduce the licensing cost. Moreover, if you actually look at the, the core value proposition of, of the storage layer there, uh, DAS typically makes three copies of the data. We don't. We, we are very greedy and we're making sure that um, you're using shared storage and we are applying a bunch of storage efficiency you know, techniques to further dedupe, compress, compact that data for world class storage efficiency. So cost efficiency is obviously a great benefit for any company when they're specially evolving uh, from a digital perspective. What are some of the uh, business level benefits? You mentioned speed a minute ago. What is data on tap and even on tap in the cloud enabling your enterprise customers to achieve at the business level, maybe from faster time to market, um, identifying you know, with machine learning and AI new products? Give me an example of maybe a customer that you think really articulates the value that on tap in the cloud can deliver. So, one of the things that is really important is to have your you know, data management uh, you know, capability, whatever the data is being produced. So ONTAP you know, being consumed either as a VM or a service, I don't know if you've seen some of the partnerships that we have with the AWS and Azure, we're able to offer the same rich data management capabilities, not only in the traditional data center, but in the cloud. So what that really enables customer to do, customers to do is to simplify and have you know, the same you know, operating system, the same data management um, platform that for both the second platform traditional applications as well as for the third platform applications. I've seen a company like Adobe uh, be you know, very uh, successful in deploying um, their infrastructure, their services, not only on-prem uh, on in their traditional data center, but using ONTAP Cloud. So um, we have more than about 1,500 customers right now that have adopted ONTAP in, in the AWS Cloud. What are you seeing in terms of the adoption of Flash? I'm particularly interested in the intersection of, of Flash adoption and, and the developer angle. Uh, because we've seen, in certain instances, organizations are able to share data off of Flash much more efficiently than you would be, a, a, for instance, off a spinning disk. Have you seen a developer impact uh, in your customer base? Absolutely. Um, I think most of customers initially have adopted Flash because of high throughput and low latency. And I think o over time, um, customers really understood and identified with the overall value proposition and, and, and cost of ownership of Flash that um, enables them to consolidate multiple workloads in mm -hmm. a smaller footprint. Right, so that enables you to then reduce the cost to operate, you know, that that infrastructure, and um, you know, it really gives you a, a range of of applications that you can deploy that you were never able to do that. Right, um, everybody's looking to to do in place or in inline analytics that now are possible because of this, uh, you know, fast media. Um, folks are looking to accelerate uh, old applications in which they cannot invest anymore, but they just want to run, uh, you know, faster. Flash also te tends to be more reliable than, than traditional storage, so you know customers definitely appreciate that. You know, fewer things could you know could go wrong. So, uh, overall, the, the the value proposition of, of, of Flash it's all encompassing, and we believe that in the near future, Flash will be the de facto standard in everybody's you know data center, whether it's on prem or or in the cloud. How about uh, backup and recovery in? in big data. Uh, we obviously, the enterprise, you know, is very you know, concerned about, uh, about data protection. What's similar in, in big data? What's, what's different and what's NetApp's you know, angle on that? I think uh, data protection and data security will never to, uh, stop being important to, to our customers. Um, security is top of mind for um, everybody in the, in the industry and it's a source of resume changing events, if you would, and they're yeah. typically not promotions. So 
Uh, we have invested uh, a tremendous deal in certifications, you know, for HIPAA, for FIPS. Um, we are enabling uh, encryption both at rest and in flight. Uh, we are uh, spend a lot of um, We've done a lot of work to make sure that, it, that the encryption can happen as a software layer to make sure that we give um, customers best storage class, uh, um, you know, uh, efficiency. And um, what we're also leveraging is the, the innovation that ONTAP has uh, done over many years to protect the data. Replicated snapshots, tiering the data to the, the cloud, um, these are techniques that we're commonly using to reduce the cost of ownership, also protect the data that customers deploy. So security is still a hot topic, right? And, and like you said, it probably always will be. Where, it, but it's a shared responsibility, right? So customers, you know, leveraging um, NetApp Safe for on-prem hybrid, also using Azure or AWS. Where, who's your target audience? If you're talking to, you know, um, the, the guys and gals that are still managing storage, are you also having the, have, having the, the CISO or the security guys come in and gals to understand, all right, we've got this deployment in Azure or AWS, we're going to bring in ONTAP to facilitate this. There's a shared responsibility of security. Who's at the table from your perspective in, in your customers that, that you need to help understand how they facilitate true security? Um, it's definitely been a, a transformative event where more, more and more um, you know, uh, people in, in an IT organizations are involved in the decisions um, that, that are required to deploy the applications. Um, there was a time when we would talk only to the storage admin. After a while we, we've talked about, you know, we, we started talking to the application admin, the virtualization admin, and now you're, you're talking to the line of business who has that vested interest to make sure that um, they can uh, harness the power of the data in their environment. So you have the CISO, you have the traditional infrastructure people, you have the app administration, and you have the, the app owner, the business owner, that are all at the table that are coming in uh, looking to choose the best of breed solution you know, for their data management. What are the conversations like with your, your CXO executives? Everybody talks about digital transformation. It's kind of an overused term, but there's real substance when you actually peel the onion. What, is, what are you seeing as NetApp's role in affecting digital transformations within your customer base? I think we, uh, we have a vision um, of how we can help enterprises um, take advantage of the dis digital transformation and adopt it. Um, I think we have three tenets of that vision. Number one is we're helping customers um, harness the, the power of the cloud. Number two, we're looking to enable them to future-proof um, their investments and, and build the next generation data center. And number three, uh, nobody starts with a fresh slate, so we're looking to help customers modernize their current infrastructure through, through storage. Uh, we have a lot of expertise in, in storage. We've helped over time, you know, customers uh, time and again adopt disruptive technologies in non-disruptive ways. We're looking to adopt these technologies and trends on behalf of our customers and then help them, uh, you know, uh, use them in, in, a, in a seamless, um, safe way. And continue their evolution to identify new revenue streams, new products, new opportunities, and even probably give other lines of business access to this data that they need to understand. Is there value here? If so, how can we harness it faster than our competitors, right? Absolutely. It's, it's all about deriving value out of the data. I think earlier I called it the, the, the gold of the 21st you know, century. This is a trend that uh, you know, will continue. Uh, I believe there will, there will be no enterprise or sector that won't focus on using machine learning, deep learning, um, analytics to derive more value out of the data, to find more t customer touch points, to optimize their business. You know, to um, to really compete in the marketplace. Data plus AI plus cloud economics are the new innovation drivers of the next 10, 20 years. Completely agree. Well, Octavian, thanks so much for spending time with us this morning, sharing what's new at NetApp, some of the visions that you guys have, and also some of the impact that you're making with customers. We look forward to having you back on the program in the near future. Thank you. Appreciate uh, having the time. And for my co-host Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube live on day two of coverage 
of our event, Big Data SV. We are at this really cool venue, Forager Tasting Room. Come down here, join us, uh, get to hear all these great conversations. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest after a short break. <laughs>